this is something that just so many people get wrong. If you follow this advice, it will significantly impact the quality and professionality of your PowerPoint presentations. Hi guys, I'm Heinrich from From Learning. Welcome to another episode in my channel. This video is an excerpt of my online course on creating PowerPoint slide presentations in the same way as top management consulting firms such as BCG or Bain do. As you may know, I worked myself in one of those firms for over six years. I created thousands of PowerPoint slides. This is really what my work was all about for a majority of the time and I gained very valuable knowledge and insights into how to create these presentations. In most professional jobs, one of the main reasons to use PowerPoint is to visualize data and to present data in one chart. However, how exactly the data is presented in the chart and what the chart consists of is very unclear and you see very elemental mistakes being done here. When you create presentations in consulting or actually any business at all, there should be one rule and this is that you should be able to take out one page of your presentation deck and that the page itself should be self-explanatory to everybody who just picks it up and reads it. And the reason is that very often these kind of presentations are not used for Steve Jobs style keynote speeches or addresses. It's not really meant to be presented even though of course sometimes this happens as well. But very frequently, these kind of documents are really used as documents that then are shared in the organization, sometimes saved for many months and years to come. And then it is important that maybe in a year from now, when a new colleague enters the organization, picks out a presentation, reads something, is able to understand what was meant at the time, especially because the employee who maybe created the deck or created a specific page maybe it's not in the comp company anymore at all, right? So this is why it's important that a page speaks for itself, is self-explanatory, and nobody needs to be there to really explain it to somebody, but you can just understand it by looking at it. And this is exactly what this video will focus on. We will talk about how to visualize data in a diagram and then specifically how the diagram should be composed in order for the diagram to be self-explanatory. This video is an excerpt from a course on CEO level presentations on how to create presentations like top management consulting firms like BCG or Bain do. If you're interested to have a look at the full course and read the reviews of what other people think about the course, have a look at the video description. You will find a link to the course actually with a discount coupon included in it. Let's jump into it. Another really crucial concept when visualizing your data is the concept of making your charts speak for themselves and what that means is the following you know you really have to think back about how these presentations how these top management presentations will be going to use and the fact is that these presentations often get sent around among top management or among other apartments and then people have your document in their hand and they want to understand what they see by themselves without you needing to stand next to them and to take their hand and explain every little thing is thing to them. So what's really important is that you are able to create your charts. And I think this is especially relevant to charts because charts can often be confusing to many people. So it's really important that you are able to create your charts in a way that they are self-contained, speak for themselves and contain all the information necessary that are required for a good comprehension of them. So let's just look into some things which are really crucial for that to be possible. So what are the things that should be included in every chart? The first thing is something like clear description of a chart. So basically, what do I see, right? And here's just one example. So here is a chart comparing uh, different regions on a certain kind of metrics. So the, the title could be here a bit generic market dynamics per region. And of course, try to do it as tangible and as concrete as possible. Then what's always important is the unit of measurement. So what is actually shown? <laughs> and you would be surprised how many you know, charts exist out there in presentation that do not even tell you what the unit of measurement is. And I mean, this chart is a bit complicated because it has three dimensions. You have this one axis, you have this one axis, and then the bubble itself, the diameter of the bubble is a dimension for itself. And here, of course, it's crucial that you give the unit of measurement of every single dimension that you use. So here it says percentage of revenue, 
Here it is the percentage of revenue as well. And here, uh, kind of the, the unit of measurement is euro million. And what I just want to highlight is whenever you use percentage, it's always important to always say, you know, the percentage of what is given here. And as you can easily see, if you just talk about operating margin, so it's more or less clear that this is some kind of percentage, but margins are defined in very different ways, right? And it's not always given or not always clear that a margin is calculated as a percentage of revenue. So really make it clear here that you are referring to revenue. And the same is of course true for the KGA, for the compounded annual growth rate. So of course that is a percentage, but the growth rate of what are we looking at? Of the profits, of the revenues, or what are we talking about, right? So always really make clear, just make it a good habit of yours that whenever you write percentage, that you write per percentage of something and make clear what this something is. Another thing that's really important but very often forgotten is the time. So when, kind of from when is this data coming from? What data do I see? And here it's given the year 2014. Here is given the time frame of the growth rate we're looking at. So here are only two years. And this is really important because it's uh, not really intuitive what that would be, right? Because often these presentations might be go around, might be sent around one or two years later after you created them. And then nobody knows anymore from when the data is. But even if you create it right now, and you are basing the data on some kind of research report, for instance, that you found somewhere. In this case, it's some kind of annual report, so it's not a research report. But, you know, the data is coming from somewhere, from some kind of source, and the source is probably not basically created today, right, but in the past. So make sure that you indicate clearly from when the data is so that the audience or your readers really can know that. Another important thing is the legend or chart key. So whenever you use some kind of color coding or other things that are necessary to understand, use a legend. And here we are using a legend for these circles to explain that the diameter of the circles matter, that they mean something, diameter based on market size. And then what you see here is that these two circles are covered, colored. So these are blue, whereas the others are gray. So here is not included a legend for that. You could surely do that. And the reason why here is not included a legend is that Kind of it refers to in the title that uh, the recommendation on this page is to focus on these two regions. So it's kind of logical within the structure of the page why these two kind of countries are highlighted. But of course you could highlight that here as well. And then what's always helpful with these kinds of things is to include the source. So where is the data actually coming from? And often it's some kind of report, but even if you got the, the data from within the company, for instance, uh, you went to the management accounting department and those guys gave you some data sets. Then mention the department from where the data is from. This also really helps to make it transparent. And uh, often you will have the discussion in the company that, you know, people are looking into different uh, kind of uh, data sources and one department, you know, the data looks like this, the other department, uh, the similar data looks a bit different. So always make sure where it's coming from so that it's relevant. And then just the general point, you know, any other relevant qualification of the chart, anything else that is necessary and is required to really understand what you're seeing, put it on the chart because people otherwise might not be able to understand that anymore later. And um, just one thing that comes to mind, what is often uh, done wrongly um, in customer service, right? So, so imagine you conducted a customer service or you are citing some kind of results on, on some kind of customer surveys uh, that somebody else conducted. And what's really crucial with this kind of data is to include where the customer survey took place, right? So was it a European survey or was it a, a German survey? As you probably by now know by my, from my accent, I, I'm actually coming from Germany. Or was it a, a, an American survey or was it a global survey? because the implication of the data is very different if it's a global survey versus a survey that was conducted in a very specific country. And I mean, even in consulting companies like, like mine, you, you would find it amazing how often you, you see kind of customer survey data being sent around with no clear indication, even though this is of course bad, bad practice, people forget to write it. 
and then it's useless, right? Because you do not really know where the data is coming from, where it was uh, kind of collected, and then this really, really limits uh, the things that you can do with it. With it. And just uh, one small note that actually just catched myself. So here for the operating margin, we do not have a year information, right? So um, it would be good practice to include a year as well. So from which year uh, did you took the operating margin from? Okay, I hope that's uh, that's kind of clear and I hope that wasn't too detailed for you, but I think it's really, really important to get that across that you just need to make sure that you put all the information on your chart that is required to understand it and to let it speak for itself. Don't let other people guess what your chart means. Really make it clear for them because otherwise people will be confused and your analysis won't be so helpful. Thanks again, everybody, for watching. If this video actually was valuable for you, please press the like button. And if you would like to keep up to date with all the content that I have planned the next days and weeks, please subscribe to the channel and you will be informed. I have many pieces of video planned for the future, both on how to create PowerPoint slide presentations, meeting the standards of strategy consulting firms, but also on other topics on business and management and to make you successful in the first years of your career. This is from Learning. Thank you for watching.